Hey, X, how are you? Good, man. How's it going? It's going all right. Buenos dias. Uh, good morning. Well, I guess for you, good evening. Um, my name is Chute Scott. I am an artist, an organizer. I've worked in the climate justice movement for the majority of my life. Yeah, grateful to be, be having this conversation with you, Sandesh. Wonderful <laughs> to meet you. And uh, hopefully someday in the future, I get to meet you in person. Likewise. My name is Sandesh Karur. Uh, I'm a National Geographic Explorer. I'm a wildlife filmmaker. And I like to give the natural world a voice and all the creatures a voice within it. And that's what I do. Well, X, you've got a lovely background over there. I okay. really have to apologize for my incredibly bad background here. <laughs> I'm sitting in my car because the camp where I'm at, at the edge of the forest, has a very weak Wi-Fi network. So I can barely get a signal out there. So I had to drive up the hill 10 minutes to get to the spot where I get a good 4G network. And you that's great. how I'm able to connect to you. So Perfect. apologies for my background. I was wondering, can you, can, you tell, can you tell me just a little bit about the work you're doing right now? Like kind of where you're at? The work you were doing kind of right before lockdown because it sounded really, really beautiful. Yeah, so just before lockdown, I was high up in the mountains in the Himalaya and we were documenting a very remote part of the country called the Siang wow. Gorge. So that gorge is highly unexplored and there's a lot of new species and, and it's one of those places which uh, is so remote, very few people have been to. It's like a completely different world. And, and, and I love going to places like that and documenting different aspects about it in the hope that everything from the ethnic diversity to the natural diversity, everything needs to be preserved because there's so much for us to learn from these places. The, the work that you're doing sounds, sounds absolutely incredible, but the medium of storytelling, of film, of photography, you can really bring these worlds to life for so many people that wouldn't otherwise have access. And for me, in the conversation around the environment, what I have really been drawn to, especially in the last couple of years, is really looking at how do we make these conversations accessible to people and to understand how these natural spaces uh, really connect to our existence, to our communities. Adopting that kind of mentality and helping show people these natural spaces helps them remember that we're, we're actually very closely related to everything in this natural world. I would love to hear kind of how that connects to your work and how your work helps bring those, that perspective or, or, or what you think on that. X, I can't agree with you more. We are so much a part of that natural ecosystem. Every one of us, we are just interconnected and it's something that we cannot do without. And at the same time, we as human beings think that we are above it and beyond it and we're not part of it. We're not part of that integral fabric. And what I do and what I try to do is to remind people that we are still a part of that. And um, what I do, documenting things as they are, bringing these different worlds together is so important to remind people that we are a part of it and we need to respect that and be humble enough to accept that. Absolutely. That's what I hope my, my work does. What about you? Uh, what, what were you working on just before the lockdown happened? <laughs> and how have it's, you been keeping busy during the lockdown? Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's wild. So right before, right before lockdown, I threw a, a huge concert you know, to, to celebrate the release of an album. And so we threw this huge party, you know, we had like hundreds of people at this venue. And then two weeks later, not two weeks later, I was like on my way to the East Coast and then things just like shut down like that. So it was a little bit of like a, a full stop, you know, it's as we were building momentum for this creative project. And so through the pandemic, a lot of my writing has, has been inward and like internal and really reflective on my home, on my community, um, things that I've been really removed from actually. It's been, it's been really beautiful, honestly, the, the art that has come through during the pandemic and pushing me to explore things I wouldn't have explored if I hadn't been just like locked, you know, in, the, in one place by myself. What is creativity to you? 
creativity, I don't think is, is something that you either have or you don't. I think it's a dance almost, right? Like you, you, you dance with this process of, of being able to authentically like reflect what we are inside. And so I think creativity is when we are able to reflect ourselves um, and able to place that into an image, a story, a song, a poem, a lyric. And that's why I think my art and my music will never fit into like one box or one space or one genre or one, you know, label of, of like conscious music, because as human beings, we are so complex. And for me, like my art will always be striving to reflect that complexity. And I think it is also ever present and all around us. I think if you look at nature, that is the greatest teacher. Yeah, that's where we can draw a lot of creativity from. Is just by simply observing nature. I mean, I myself, I draw a lot of my creativity from the form of nature. And I find creativity to also be a very meditative process. Mm-hmm. And when I say meditate, I don't mean an old monk going into a cave and spending a few months in isolation. Meditation is something all of us do in our everyday moments in life. If we can only take that moment to pause when you sip that cup of coffee and just let that taste simmer on your tongue, that's a moment of meditation. And you f- fill your whole life with those little moments, you know, and you actually pause to observe. That leads to a lot of where I get my creativity from. And, and, and then what I strive to do is try to document those little moments and then make people actually watch it. So then they watch moments of my meditation through these films. And uh, yeah, it's a very fun process. And I don't think I can ever tire of doing it because it's every day it's changing. Every day it's different. Every day you see new things and document new things. And, and that's what I want to keep doing. So X, what's, what's your advice for the next generation? I, I've recently gone through this process of really being like, what am I doing this for? What am I creating this art for? And ask yourself that question, you know, and, and, and like take your time with it too and allow your art to be a place of discovery for. It. And so as these young artists step into the space, like you will be a part of imagining a new reality, a new culture. And so I think wield that, wield that with a lot of care and with a lot of love and know, like step into these space and, and, and claim and own your, your power. Absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, this is the new normal and there is going to be a new culture. And that Absolutely. culture is going to be inspired by music and by strong stories. I totally mm-hmm. agree with that. And I mean, the next generation is the future of the planet. Mm-hmm. It's our job. I mean, to help mold mold society in the best positive way possible in order to create better stewards for our planet Mm -hmm. through strong storytelling, impactful stories. Absolutely. I love that. Um, What would you offer to to young ones coming up, um, seeking that light and seeking to, to share that light? What advice I have for people who want to get into this is to really have the patience. They need to practice the three Ps of photography. They need to have patience, have perseverance, and passion to get into this field. And I, that's my advice to the next generation. What I do takes an immense amount of patience, and that's some, something that has to come from within you. This one time, well, recently I was sitting on a big watchtower for 30 days, every day waiting for this one little behavior of this great hornbill. So for 30 days, it didn't happen. We were packed up and ready to leave that valley, hornbill valley. And I look up and I see that it's a blue sky. The first piece of blue sky I had seen in that whole month. So I turn back around, unpack all my gear, that this big flock of eight, 10 hornbill just gather on that tree and right in front of me, they go into that amazing cask butting behavior, never been filmed before and makes you just want to watch it over and over again because no one's ever seen it. Even we had never seen it. It was the first time it had ever been filmed. 
And that was so exciting. So sometimes it just takes all the patience you have and a little bit more to get that shot. I was going to say, like, I've really seen photography serve as a tool to help people reclaim space and stories and reshape culture. And, and I think, you know, for indigenous people, like, there's so much, like, wrong with how society has painted who we are and, and how we interact and what our culture is like. And I think it's so important what you do in helping, like, you're helping build portals for people to look through, you know, you're helping build bridges for people to, like, walk across to understand the world in new ways. Um, and I'm, I'm just so inspired by that. Thank you. Thank you, X. But yeah, I, I really appreciate your time. It's really good to, to hear from you, to hear your perspective, your stories. We'll absolutely be in contact and, and just looking forward to continuing to share. Likewise, amigo. Uh, mi casa su casa. So please come visit. And, and I look forward to hearing your music. Amazing. Well, in our, in our language, we say kwaliochtli, which means good journey. So I wish you a good journey. I wish you a safe journey. Thank you, X. Very nice to meet you. Thank you.